Hey there crochet creators! In this video I'm going to show you how to crochet the simple yet beautiful crop top. This is a super easy tutorial and is made to fit you perfectly. I'm calling it the horizon crop top. I'm Candice and welcome to my channel Forest Feather Fashion. Let's get started. We are going to need some yarn. I'm using milk cotton, two 50 gram skeins of the blue and one in a creamy white. A pair of scissors, two crochet hooks, one slightly smaller than the other. I'm using a 3.5 and a 4 millimeter, stitch markers and a measuring tape. This pattern is made according to your exact measurements, so I won't be counting stitches for every row. We will only be using a single crochet and a half double crochet stitch for this top. Grab your measuring tape and measure your waist. Mine is about 30 inches, so make a note of your number. And next, measure from your waist to your underarm. And jot down that measurement. Grab both your crochet hooks and we'll start with the larger one. Make a slip knot. We are starting with the ribbing around the waist. I'm chaining 15, but you can chain more or less depending on how wide you would like your ribbing to be. Remove your larger hook and insert the smaller one. The front of the chain has these little V's and on the back you'll notice these little knobs. That's where we'll be working into. Make a half double crochet into the third stitch from your hook. To make your half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Make a half double crochet in every stitch along your chain. After your last half double crochet, chain two, and then turn your work. Now we'll be making half double crochets into the back loops only. So into the next stitch, insert your hook into the back loop and make a half double crochet. Again, only into the back loop. This is what will give that ribbing effect. Chain two, and again, turn your work and insert half double crochets into the back loops only. Continue this pattern until your waistband is at a length just shorter than your waist measurement. So mine measured up to 30 inches. I want to be able to stretch the waistband up until 30. So that's about two and a half inches shorter than my waist measurement. We don't want this to stretch too far, but just enough to fit around the waist. And remembering that crochet work can stretch over time. Now it's time to join our two ends of the waistband together. I'm chaining one just to have a bit of movement from my hook. Sandwich your two pieces together and slip stitch to join. The ribbing looks the same on both sides, so there is no right or wrong side. So insert your hook through all the stitches, yarn over and pull this through all the loops. After your last slip stitch, chain one. Now this will be the inside of the waistband. 
so let's turn this around and then grab your larger hook for row one we'll be making single crochets around the top of the waistband you can either count how many rows you have in your waistband and evenly space that many single crochets or you can feel for the next row or ridge with your finger after a few stitches you will get the hang of it and know where to insert your hook Continue making single crochets all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. Slip stitch to that first chain one. For row two, grab your stitch markers. We'll be making increases. I'm counting the ridges on the ribbing from the middle of the back to the sides, just so that I can place the stitch markers at about the same area. chain two and make two half double crochets into the next stitch. This counts as our first increase. Continue making one half double crochet in every stitch until you reach your stitch marker. Remove your stitch marker and place two half double crochets into that stitch. Slip stitch to the first chain. For row three, I'm making one half double crochet in every stitch around. By adding a row without any increases every now and then, the top gradually gets larger. Slip stitch to finish. For row four, I'm adding two increases on the front of the top. By counting from the sides, I'm able to get a rough estimation of where the front middle is. Then I'm going to place stitch markers where I need increases for the bust area. Turn your work, chain two, and make one half double crochet in every stitch until you reach your stitch markers, where you will then place two half double crochets in that stitch. and then slip stitch to finish row four. For row five, I'll be making a half double crochet in every stitch around. You can always add more side increases if you would prefer. For row six, I'm adding two more increases in the front. I'm adding them a little bit closer to the center. If you have a larger bust compared to your waist measurement, I suggest adding a few more increases in the front of the top. To do this, you can add one or two more stitch markers in the front of the top and increase by two in each, instead of adding more than two half double crochets in every increased stitch. For row number seven, add a half double crochet in every stitch. After row number seven, it's time for a fitting. Try this on and see where you need to increase more. 
After my fitting, I realized I do need more increases in the front for the top to fit over my bust. Make sure that your increases aren't directly on top of one another. So have a look at your previous row, locate your increase and slightly offset your stitch marker. From row number nine, we will be working up until our underarm measurement. What I'm doing is increasing one in the middle and two on the sides every row. I've reached my waist to underarm measurement at seven inches, so I'm trying it on to see if it fits. I love the length of the body of the top and it fits over my bust area really nicely. Now it's time to add the next section to our top, making the horizon. Counting the ridges of your ribbing from the sides, find the middle of your top and mark this off. Now we will need to count the stitches from the middle to the sides of the top. We won't be including the stitch marker stitch into this count and we'll also need to make sure that we end on an even number. Make a mental note of that number and place a stitch marker in the stitch. Counting from the stitch next to your stitch marker, find the exact even number on the other side. We want to end up having an odd number of stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker, so you can count this to make sure. Remove your stitch marker and add your next color. Make a double knot to make sure that it's secure. Insert your hook and chain two. Make a half double crochet in the same stitch. In the next stitch, we will make an extended half double crochet. So yarn over and insert your hook into the previous row's stitch directly below. A half double crochet in the next stitch. And then again, an extended half double crochet. We'll be alternating between half double crochets and extended half double crochets along this first row. This can be a bit tricky in the beginning, but once you get the hang of the pattern, you'll be able to know where the next stitch needs to go. You can always double check by making sure that there is a stitch between every extended half double crochet in the previous row. Continue this pattern along this row one and I'll meet you at the end. The second last stitch in the row should be an extended half double crochet. Then you can remove your stitch marker and place a half double crochet in that stitch. In the beginning, we had a chain two and a half double crochet. So we make another half double crochet in this last stitch. Chain one. Turn your work and now we'll be placing single crochets in every stitch along this row. For the top section of this top, we are going to be alternating between a row of half double crochets and a row of single crochets. After your last single crochet, chain two and turn your work. Now we will begin our decreases. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. Make one half double crochet in every stitch along this row until you get to your second last stitch.
When you have two stitches left, we are going to be making another half double crochet decrease. Chain one and turn your work. We will now be making a decrease with our single crochet stitch. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. Continue making one single crochet in every stitch until you have two stitches remaining. Again, make a single crochet decrease at the end of this row. Chain two, turn your work and continue this pattern by alternating between half double crochet and single crochet rows, decreasing at the start and end of every row. To make sure that your decreases are the same angle on both sides, you can fold your top like this to check. After a couple more rows, insert a stitch marker so that you can do a fitting. Check that it covers the bust and is the length that you would like. Then it's time to make the straps. Remove the stitch marker and chain two. Turn your work and make a half double crochet in the next three stitches. Chain two. Turn your work and make a half double crochet in the next three stitches. Continue this for a couple more rows. Grab your measuring tape and determine how long your straps need to be. Again, we don't want our straps to be longer than the measurement. Mine's at 16, so I leave enough space to be able to stretch. Place a stitch marker in your last stitch and cut your yarn, making sure you have a long tail as we will need this to sew on our strap. Insert your hook into the next corner to make the second strap. You can count the number of rows on your first strap to determine how long your second strap needs to be. First, you'll need to decide where you would like your straps. I would like mine a little bit more to the center. Now you can count the stitches from the side to where you would like your strap. Make a mental note of this number and secure this with a stitch marker. Count from the other side and secure your second strap. With the first strap, make sure that the right sides are facing each other. Insert your hook through all the stitches and make a slip stitch. Slip stitch along to join the strap.
Once you've made your last slip stitch, you can pull the yarn through to make a knot. Repeat this for the other strap, and then you can weave in your ends. There are many different ways you can make this top. You can use a single crochet for the ribbing, and you can alternate between different stitches to give it more of a textured look. If you like crochet tutorials and videos about sustainable fashion, you'll definitely want to subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Forest Feather Fashion. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, happy creating!